Previously on Anything Goes. The, now, one of the things I want to ask you, are you a drinker? Are you a partier, Deanne? <laughs> You party? Oh no! If I if I was pointing to the bathroom <laughs> right now really. and I said, "Do you party?" Would you follow me in? You know, I want to say yes to counteract all the serious feminist bullshit. But so is that a? I guess. Um, I was, but no, I don't really drink. I don't really drink. I like to oh. think I party though. Okay. Here's a story about me partying. Well, I was going to ask, like, do you ever? Because you've you've been to festivals, and when you're mm-hmm. there for the first time, do you ever worry about getting too hammered or loaded? Because oh, Darren had a festival this weekend. Oh yeah. Comics got about drunk. That. No, um, that's not really my. That's not, really that's that's not, not your not scene. My thing. No, I know it's not your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine yeah. either. Yeah. But here's my thing. Like New Year's, I was hanging out with people on ecstasy, and I was completely sober. Why? Because I was flying to London the next day, and I. But you, you weren't to flying the plane. You were a passenger. <laughs> right, but anyway, <laughs> whatever. Because I have like? delicate brain chemistry. Okay. I will cry for two weeks after I do ecstasy. <laughs> like it's not good for me. But so, um, all all my friends are on it, and then, but it was that night that I realized, like, this is why I can hang with people that are on drugs when I'm not, because I'm kind of naturally like that, like. We were walking home and everyone's like, should we walk through the park? I'm like, of course. They're like, should we roll down this hill? I'm like, yes, I want to roll down the hill. Should we lay in the snow and talk about how pretty trees are? I'm like, yes, of course we should. And then we just ended up holding hands and skipping home. And I'm like, I always want to hold hands and skip home. And I'm so glad that these guys were on E. We could actually do it. You see, that's a bad, because I, you could suggest shit like that to me all the time. And I would be like, hey, do you want to set this on fire? Yes, I do. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Have you ever set a wicker chair on fire? It's, no, it's but I bet it would be remarkable. amazing. It is quite something. Yeah. <laughs> And now, let's get to a new exciting show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for some laughs? Are you? Don't touch that dial. It was molested, and it brings back horrible memories. This is Anything Goes with Darren Frost. How the fuck am I funny? Dave Martin. What have we got here? A fucking comedian. And Kathleen McGee. And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you. Can you dig it? (laughs) And what's... And so... Right, you said that in Edmonton, it, they're not changing anything. So nothing's open right now. No clubs oh, no, are stuff's open. open. No, no comedy clubs are open. No theaters are open. Uh, but like restaurants are open, and uh, you're supposed to only be going out with your cohort, or if you live alone, you can have like you can go out with two other people that you're in close contact with normally. But it's like nobody follows that. Everybody, like I work at a restaurant, and I can guarantee you. We ask people, are you from the same house? And they're all like, yeah, but there's right, like right. eight adults. They're not all from the same household. It's, right. They're part of a like, rea- they're all they're all a part of a reality show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. real world Edmonton every yeah. day. It, and they let us out for one night. Yeah, real world I Edmonton. I don't know if I ever told you this story, Kathleen. I'm pretty sure I told Dave, but there was a Canadian reality show. Uh, where the, they got all these young people to live in a condo loft kind of thing in Toronto. And I think it was yeah, called was The Lofters. Called? The Lofters, yeah, I think. Yeah, The Lofters. And I was, remember that. Yeah, and it was, uh, we. I was on Gutterball Alley, which was on the Comedy Network at the time. And they had Johnny and Wade, the hosts, were going to be on it. And at that time, they're like, look, Darren, just come you be crazy because it that's their thing. They like to be straight, act cool, and I'm the one that's going to hump something or act like an idiot. So we had worked it out that if, if Wade said to me, if I'm bored, I'm going to put a loony on a table somewhere. And that's your cue to freak out. So it was like a very basic, because every night they, they did this kind of like entertainment tonight thing where they interviewed celebrities or whatever. So they're interviewing these two guys. and So it got boring. So they put a loony down. So I took all my clothes off. I cupped my cock. I might have kept my underwear on. I'm not sure. But then I jumped up on the island and I started yelling, who wants to see my pogo? Who wants to see my pogo? Cut to commercial. I'm off. We're out. We're kicked out. We're banned from the lofter show. <laughs> I totally forgot. I just remember that story right now. It was like it was another show that they were going to try to start, um, and I remember it was like I, Jersey Shore, right? Yeah, there was it was going like, to be called the Lake Shore. Yeah. And, oh God. <laughs> uh, and this one comic, let's just call him Manolis, um, <laughs> auditioned for it, and I guess there was footage of him, and somehow I shit on, and so, I guess on Facebook I shit on the show, and then I actually got a call from this comic 
And I really had to talk him down because it's like, like he took me shitting on the show and the fact that he wanted to be on this show as a shot at him. And I was just trying to say, Manolis, you're a comedian. Um, like Manolis, you know, if you're a comedian. You can, go, you can go on whatever show you want. But right, that I, doesn't mean that I'm not going to make fun of that show. Well, no, and also I was saying, Manolis, you're a comedian. You're a stand-up. You know, you, you write jokes. You work yeah. on what you're doing. Do you think this is the best way to showcase yourself? You know, they're, they're going to edit it to make you look like a goofball. I mean, if yeah. you want to get your name out there, go ahead, go for it. If that's what you feel like, the if it's a perfectly okay and you're comfortable with showcasing yourself like that, go ahead and fucking do it. And then uh, eventually, I don't know if, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I, I think the hamster uh, on the wheel in his brain just got tired and then the, the <laughs> phone call ended. But it was really, it was one of those shows. I mean, I feel like same way, same way for any, uh, any reality show. I mean, if you go on as, not, as a comedian, I don't know if it ever actually, I don't know if anything ever actually came from it, though. I oh, think it know. didn't air because there was some sort of controversy. I think there was, like, somebody on the show that was, like, not, and this was before cancel culture, but, like, I think it was, like, it might have been a sexual assault. There was something, and because I, mm -hmm. I remember hearing about this show, because I think I was living in Toronto when they were were starting it, and I think I heard, like, it, it was almost going to air, and then they decided not to because somebody on the show was not... A good person. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm I'm happy for anyone who can get a gig, whether it's a shitty show or not. I mean, there's countless shows in Canada. Like Gunner Valley was not a good show. I had to do a lot of embarrassing things. In fact, there's a documentary called Stupidity or something, and the opening shot is me sucking on a dildo from fucking that show. I don't remember like, seeing you in, in, in the documentary Stupidity. Is it clearly? It's clearly you? Oh, it's clearly me. Okay, uh, maybe I need to watch again. Yeah, I'm sucking on a dildo because it was a whole deep-throating a joke or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, this is their, their point is, look how dumb TV's gotten. And then it cuts to me going, ah, you know, like, <laughs> we, we all have to take a gig for money. I, I, so I don't judge people, but don't expect I don't expect people going, well, that was, you know, good work, Darren. You know, I'm like, yeah, it, <laughs> fucking, it paid my rent for a bit. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean... Yeah, I guess if, you know, if, I mean, what, what was that, the Dragon's Den show uh, that um, the two uh, two agents, uh, that yeah. Tony and Derek were on. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think they introduced them as comedians or working for, a, a, I think they, did, I can't remember what the voiceover was that said what they are. It was like, yeah. these two comedians, like, so, I mean, they edited, I mean, according to, to Tony, they made it, they edited it to look, make them look really bad. Right. And so, I mean, but that's going to happen. It's sort of like it's... It's the you know, old it's argument. The chances if, you take going on TV. Right. If you give them the footage, they're going to fuck with the footage. And you can't come back and then complain. You know, when you're only a couple of years in, I get it. You don't know. But I was, you know, 15, 20 years in when it got to Raw Alley came around. I knew exactly what they were going to do. I know exactly how they're going to edit it. And it was going to make me look like an idiot. And I'm like, okay, this ain't no different than me dancing like a monkey in a stupid Molson commercial. It's the same. It just pays and that's it. Move on. Same thing with those kind of shows. You give them the footage, they're going to use it. Right. And also, I mean, you have to decide, you know, is this the show that I'm going to want to refer to myself as a comedian on? Because, you know, it's like, you know, they're not going to show... Like the comedian, the, the Manolis, who had a problem with me shitting on that show, was right. sort of like, I mean, I just said, this is not the way you want to show yourself off as a comedian. If you want to just be a guy, go ahead. You know, and that's who you are. But, um, oh, uh, we have countless, our... Uh, but countless comedians, and I don't even... I, in fact, I, I give Manolis credit for trying that, because let's be honest, countless comedians became bigger because of stuff like that than their actual stand-up. T.J. Miller, all these guys became actors and known for something else that then helped them in their stand-up gigs and getting more people out to see them. It's all well, even look at the comics that did video on trial. Yeah, I was like a lot of trial. them got yes. a green card because they yes. did video on trial. Right. So yeah, that that helped a lot of them, and it even all gave some of them bigger careers. Well, I mean, even even that show, Last Comic Standing. I mean, if a comic is a sort of a you know, a 50-50 introvert, extrovert, they're probably going to do better on a reality show than some guy who's like a really, a good performer, good joke writer, um, but is sort of a very sort of introverted person. Like, you know, like a, 
don't know how well a John Steinberg would do on a reality show. Well, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I mean, but I said, I said, if I ever did, I never auditioned, but I said, if I did, what I would do, if I ever got into a house situation, I would just start pissing everywhere. Like if, if someone's being interviewed, I just run in the background and pee in a plant and just start waving, you know, because that's, yeah. that's the whole point of that show is to get known. And of course, and I'm known to be the guy who pisses and my clothes are, I'd have to drink a lot of water. But the joke would be like, do whatever you have to do to get noticed because you you don't know how they're going to edit your stand up on that show. I think some people weren't edited very well or the jokes that they chose isn't right. very well. I mean, we've now seen it with America's Got Talent. They choose your jokes. They choose what you have to present. Uh, it's kind of out of your hands. Yeah, I, I think they choose your story more than any more than more that than your jokes sometimes. That's like I, in like I think in Hollywood, like ninety percent is your story and ten percent is your talent. Because honestly, yes. when I had my manager there, like the, our first meeting, they're like, "So, what's your story?" They didn't ask me what I'd done. Right. Ask, I said, well, I'm a Canadian and I do stand up. And they're like, yes, but you, you want to wrestle Peterson. He handpicked you. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not my story. I just like a contest that I won, but that's not like, but they like want to have a story for, even if it's not about reality television, even yeah, if it's just you're auditioning for things. Right. Well, but yeah, reality television for sure. Like if you had cancer, if your cat had cancer, if like, Yep. If you were hit by a car, if your parents you're, were if you're in the, the military, car, like, yeah, it's, it's almost it's, like it's it's like they want your B-roll first. It's like it's like if you know if you go on a show and your stand-up is what you're supposed to be there for, the right. stuff they cut away to, they want that shit first. Of course. Anything goes with these cats. Am I fucking this up? <laughs> Hi, you're listening to. Oh crap! I forgot myself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Christina Walkinshaw, and you're listening to Anything Goes with Darren Frost and Kathleen and Dave on XM Lap Attack. Yeah, call me. Yeah, there we, go. It's, we were just talking, it's two years since Kathleen's been in Ontario, so you're right. She just does fuck off and doesn't come back. Yeah. I just, it was like I was so off. used to seeing you all the time, and then. <laughs> And then I went missing. <laughs> How yeah. are things going in Beth world these days? Not bad. I was just admiring my haircut because I've been cutting my own hair and I've got a shelf, got a hair shelf. I was trying to uh, do layers, a little yeah. very Carol Brady. And then all of a sudden, look at how long it is. But I decided that I should have layers and that was such a bad idea. <laughs> Do not cut your own hair. Well, we got we got. To, um, uh, I actually, I actually had a uh, had to work out of town, and we got finished work early, and uh, it was early enough that I just decided I wanted to get a haircut. So uh, we were in Cambridge, and um, uh, I, I called up a, a barber shop, and they were open, and they actually had a bar inside the barber shop. And I got there early, or I had to wait. Like they were like, "Oh, it's going to be about ten minutes." So I, I got to have a pint at the bar, and then right after I got my haircut, I still wanted to hang out there. And they were sort of like, uh, "No, it doesn't work that way. You just can't. You can't <laughs> stay." Here. Is up. Get yeah. out. <laughs> it's a barber shop first, and second of all, it's a uh, it, it's a place that you can have a beer before your haircut, but not yeah. afterwards. Dave, you're looking for the exact opposite. You're looking for a place that you can hang and maybe get a haircut. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Actually, when Barbara, when, actually, that wouldn't be bad if someone could, if Shannon should just go to bar, Shannon Laverty, who's also a very funny comic and a hairdresser, she she should just go to bars with her scissors and that apron. Yeah, that's not, that's not a health concern at all. That's not, yeah, a little, little flex of hair. Everybody would love that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. All those little bits of hair. Ooh. Yeah, a big gust of wind comes in. <laughs> Beth, I loved your Facebook stories throughout quarantine. Like all your, yes, that's like, why I are you writing a book? Are you right? Please tell me you're writing a book. Yes. No, yes. I'm not writing a book. Everybody asks me that. No, you see, I don't kiss and tell. And I honestly, I can't, I can't tell the real truth to anything because the truth would make people not like me. And I am more concerned about people not liking me than telling the truth. 
<laughs> but you have like incredible stories like yeah. that the story about mac like you know there's some like really really cool stories oh, that yeah. like well, then you should write they're a all a, true. A they're all true, book. but I just don't put in like the you know the stuff that everybody really wants to hear, and um, <laughs> so then I. But I you always, could write like a TV show, like you know Emily in Paris, but mm -hmm. Beth in Toronto. Like you could write a show about your life and use some of the truth. Like it's just you have such so many cool stories and it's interesting and like historical like it's just awesome i love reading i i agree i think there could be a show where you take everything that did happen to you and if you change the names and just make that person if it was a famous person that that happened with or whatever if it's you just make up the person it's kind of like the uh mazel the marvelous mazel you know the I same thing her. there they they just change the comics and they change this a bit obviously not with lenny bruce but for some of the other ones and they just kind of change, so you never really know. People are always talking and, oh, and wondering. Oh, people know. They would so know. <laughs> but I used but to you would never say it. <laughs> I, used, I used to do a gossip show on CFNY back in the 80s. And um, it was called Truth or Makeup. Mm. And I did it with my friends, um, Beverly Hills and the Live World Jive. And uh, when I lived in England, in London, they used to phone me. I did it for about three years in London. And they would phone me every week and I would just tell hot gossip about everybody I knew because I knew so many people. And I would have kind of a, well, I wouldn't talk about anything about drugs and I wouldn't talk about people fooling around if they were married or, I didn't want to get anybody into any deep trouble as always, but um, that was really fun. And, but, um, but people would always say, oh, tell me things. And they'd say, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened. And so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. And so-and-so was here and there and did this. And then they'd always say, but you cannot say it on your show. And then I know that they really did want me to say it because <laughs> they love it when they're being talked about. But, you know, I'd say, okay, because they'd asked me not to. But I think that they just threw that in because they felt like they should. Right. But really, they always wanted to hear about themselves. But yeah, my gossip started back back then, truth or makeup, live what's from in, London. What's interesting to me is, so you did that in the 80s, and now we've, we're have we very much a TMZ kind of you know society when it comes to gossip, which That's is a complete, complete different kind of style than what you're talking about. And what do you think of the whole TMZ kind of way of things now? Do you think it's just a natural progression or do you think it goes too far? Is there too much accessibility to people? Like like in the 80s, there was still, and in some of the, of the 90s, uh, there was sort of a little, there was still a curtain that was put up. Mystery, yeah. Yeah, but now it's sort of been, it's, all, it's almost like we want to know the artist personally just as much as we want to know their music. And I don't know if that's the best like I think if if we literally were if we literally knew everything about Jimmy Page while his music was coming out, oh yeah, then it would be like, whoa, I don't know if I want to listen to this. But I mean, there is like that sort of like, I mean, even that's even the same thing with Hollywood now. It's but it's but people become more famous for like recovery stories and getting out of rehab. It's sort of like rehab used to be a secret, but now it's like he's coming out of rehab, yay! But it's I, like what, a status thing, it, it, yeah. Was it better then? Oh, yeah. Well, people didn't know. People just, it was, gossip wasn't really happening like it, you know, eventually did. It was um, more like the Smash Hits magazine, and, you know. And I like old-fashioned gossip, like what's your favorite color and what's your favorite pie and like those kind of things. But, um, <laughs> and if I was gonna interview celebrities, I would always ask them things like, what's in your handbag? And mm. how much did you spend on dinner last night? And like the important stuff, you know? Well, it's and really- I'm like, That doesn't get you in trouble, but right. that's the kind of stuff I think people wanna know. You know, where do you buy your underwear? And, you know, favorite things. Well, so every, every but, question from inside the actor's studio. Yeah. What's your favorite? Yeah, well, it's, it's too much because I don't believe actors when they're being interviewed because I've worked with actors many, many years and I know they're all full of shit. 
<laughs> I know that, you know, when they're on set, they're having a lot of problems and their egos are huge and they're trying to get along with people. And then when they do the interview show, it's like, oh, they were so great to work with and they right. really made me a better performer because they were so good. That forced me to be better. But you know, really, that's not the case. They feel like they should say that. And mm. I, I don't buy it. I watch very few interview shows and um, because I don't think they're genuine. Um, but, I mean, it's hard to find someone that can sort of pull back the curtain and make someone feel comfortable enough to start talking. But I think a lot of the times, yeah, I don't, I don't even necessarily really, I mean, I, like Daniel Day-Lewis, I don't even know if I necessarily want to know that much about no. him because it's, that what makes him such a good actor and he's able to disguise himself in his roles. It's right. like, if I think if I knew that real Daniel Day-Lewis, I might be sort of like, oh man, it's. It's just, it wouldn't have that mystique about it. I think so. And I think TMZ, I think they're all letting it out where they are coming out of the restaurant. And, and um, they want everybody to know rather than the old, you know, paparazzi days when, you know, when they would rather die than be photographed. Yeah. Well, yeah, their publicist texts and say they're here yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, Paris Hilton is going to be- That's probably very true. Yeah, Paris yeah, but you know, maybe I will write a book one day, but um, I don't know. Even part, part fiction, part nonfiction. Like, it's just, there's just so many cool, you have so many cool stories and like, you need to record your life stories. Like, it's so, a, like, you, you grew say, up in a very cool time. When, when you say you don't like to kiss and tell, and just so you know, when before this interview started, I talked to Dave earlier today and I said that we had spoken and you said that that's your one main concern. And my attitude about that, and I said to Dave, is I don't care about the kissing and telling part of the story. Like wh whatever has happened with the people that you know, with other people or whatever, I'm not interested in that. But any of the stuff that you write on Facebook, the stories, I've never considered kissing and telling. I, mm. I consider them interesting stories. So yeah. when I say, and I'm, I'm not talking on behalf of, of Kathleen, but I'm sure that's what we mean when we say these stories should be told because they're fascinating stories because things Thank aren't you. like that anymore. Yeah, you, know, you don't need now. to name names. Just like the just like the idea of, and, and let people figure it out themselves if they want to, but like you don't have to name names. But yeah, just like learning about like you were in such a cool industry and you knew so many interesting people like it, it'd be like it'd be like if someone was like Andy Warhol's best friend and they never told a story about him you know like, like you, you need to know these things <laughs> how, many, how many pictures do you have of your father with famous people I have so many pictures of my dad even yesterday I realized I had so many pictures of my father like they're they take up a lot of room. I was thinking I've got a minute, you know, we live in the city. There's only so much space you have. Right. Um, but yeah, my dad knew a lot of famous people and um, there are many photos, but there's also a lot of people that are photographed with my dad and I don't know who they are. I think I'm going to have to start posting them and finding out. Yeah, for sure. Who they are. You know, to, bet, to, to tell anyone for people who don't know, uh, your dad played for the Hamilton Tie Cats. He did. And, and, and what was the charity that he was uh, sort of one of the big variety players? club? He started Variety Village. My father Ooh. started Variety Village back many, many years ago. And um, he, Paul, sorry, <laughs> my husband's no. distracting me doing dishes. The, the, <laughs> the Variety Village in Scarborough, is that the Yeah, the that main? was my dad. He started that. Um, he, um, was a football player and then he went into the beer business. He was mm -hmm. the head of um, PR for Carling O'Keefe back in the olden days in the 60s and 70s. And he um, thought that he should have a facility for special kids to My son went work there. Out. My son, my son who uh, was born with some problems, uh, we, I've talked many times before, went to Variety Village for some of the things and uh, for like swimming and other things because they have special pools there and yeah. other facilities that, you know, I hate to say regular kids don't need or, or can't get, it's hard to get to. Let's it's say true, that. it's true. And my dad wanted the kids to know what it would like to be to win. Right. And that was the whole thing behind it. So they could feel like winners and they could be in sports and know what it was like to come in and 
place and win and feel good about themselves. And so he raised tons of money. If you go to Variety Village, he's got wings named after him and, and all kinds of stuff. And so he met a lot of very famous people from, you know, just raising money. And my dad had a lot of charisma and he was really funny and a lot, he was a PR guy and he knew how to, uh, he had the gift of gab. Right. And he, he was very clever and he. And was, wasn't Monty was, Hall uh, big in Variety Village? Didn't he do a Monty lot? Monty Hall was big in Variety Village. He yeah. was a family friend as yes. well. And um, my dad was friends with Jack Lemon and um, lots of, you know, Canadian celebrities. And yeah, there's pictures of my dad with everybody. And I always think, oh, I posted, I'll post it again. But I always think maybe people are getting bored of seeing pictures of my dad. I'm not. No. <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald. My dad was friends with Ella Fitzgerald. That's of all so people. cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. It is. It's really awesome. And um, yeah, my dad was a very cool guy and, and uh, people really liked being around him. But that's also and an I era when, when people, be... people were friends or friendly with people, they kind of remembered that and they made connections with people that if 10, 15 years later, they would remember. Whereas now when you're a star, you meet so many people for such only a short period of time, everything is very kind of fleeting. And it's like, it's like, I remember once I was on Queen Street and it was, bars were closing and I was at the Rivoli and uh, Dan Aykroyd was walking down the street from the Horseshoe, probably to go to X-Rays or wherever he wants to go. And there's tons of people outside and everyone's like, love you, Dan. It's like, thank you very much. Dan, you're the best. Thank you very much. Literally like 50, 60 people in a row. And then there was like a, about a 20 foot gap and then me. And he looked at me expecting me to go, hey, you're great. I didn't say anything. He just kind of nodded and gave me that kind of almost like a, a thank you. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be the 80th person to tell you you're great tonight, you know, kind of thing. That's not a real connection for me. So I don't have to do that. <laughs> well, we were talking I about it was Sorry. I just thought we it was interesting because I've met Dave, uh, um, Dan Aykroyd a few times. And um, he always says when he meets somebody again, nice to meet you again. And I think that that is such a cool thing because yeah. I think he doesn't remember you, but he's catching himself just in case he has. Right. And so I've been introduced to, to him maybe two or three times. And he said that to me and I think, okay, he remembers me, but I don't think he does. I think it's a really great thing to say though. Right. If you meet a lot of people, Oh, nice to yeah. meet you again. Yeah. I'm going to start doing yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave Martin remembered me. <laughs> <laughs> We were talking about reality television before uh, you came in, and you were on one of my favorite reality television shows, Come Dine With Me. Oh, yes. My best friend in Edmonton was also on that show. The one, When they came to tape in Edmonton, I saw they were casting, and I'm like, you need to message them. And she had so much fun on the show, and she was whacking crazy, and she did not win. But uh, did you enjoy doing that show? Was that a fun time? It was. It was. I went on it twice. Because I did the redemption episode. Yes, too. that's right. You have two and times. It was so much easier the second time. The first time I did it was the hardest thing I've ever done. They were in my house from, I was the first person to ever do that show in Canada. So you can imagine it was the very first day of shooting in Canada and it was a British show. And so they had producers from England here teaching uh, the camera crew and everybody how to um, keep it in the original format, you know, and make it the iconic show that it is. And my place was full of people and they were here from about five in the morning until about 3 a.m. And it was just a mess. Everything was just, it was so hard. I was cooking all day long because I was the first person. So they had all kinds of rules. I think they went a little bit relaxed on the rules later on. And I had to do everything from scratch. Like I couldn't like chop anything ahead of time. Like I had to do everything in front of them. And it was, it was so hard, but it ended up being really fun. Except, you know what? I lost twice. And that, you know, <laughs> people go in these things and you really feel like you're going to win. Like, yeah. I really thought, I've got this. And when I realized, you know, I, I, I completely screwed up. And 
I burnt my ribs. I had my ribs in the smoker for, I don't know, like six hours too long. And when mm -hmm. I opened up the smoker and my ribs were on the floor of the smoker and they were just, I, I thought I was going to die because there were cameras there and I had, oh, to, God. I had to pretend it was okay, but it wasn't. Yeah. I, just, I just wanted to die. I couldn't believe how much I screwed up and I was so embarrassed. So for people, did you like the know. edit you got? Did I what? Sorry. Did you like the edit you got? Like, did you like how they presented your personality? Yeah. Yeah. I was so scared. And you know, I was really nervous because I was, I woke up every day for a couple of weeks after I did the show with the woulda, coulda, shoulda, mm -hmm. thinking, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Oh, please don't play that. I was a little freaked out and I pretty much, cause you know, I am a real hypnotist. I had to hypnotize myself to forget about it because I was so wound up. I had to yeah. do some serious self-hypnosis to forget. So by the time I finished shooting it front in, I think it was June and then it came on in maybe September, October, all of a sudden when it started to come, it was like, Oh yeah, right. I, oh, now for yeah. those who don't know, cause a lot of people may not even know what the premise of the show is. If I, I'm going to roughly say what it is. If I get anything wrong, please tell me the basic premise is four individuals, people, uh, each cook for each other and then they vote who is it five five people cook for each other and then you all vote and there's a winner each episode just so people don't don't have no idea what it is and you were on twice like you said there was a redemption episode and I so continue with the September October it was coming on did you have those feelings again I well I pretty much forgot about it I made myself forget about it and then all of a sudden they started showing the um the trailers for it and I was on the I was in the trailers and you could see me open up my smoker and all the smoke coming out. And, like, <laughs> and then um I was like, oh yeah, right. And that's gold to, that's gold to a reality friends. show producer. Yes. That is like gold. Yeah, and didn't Dave, and didn't you try to make Dave the Bachelor on one of those? Dave was the bachelor <laughs> on the um, spin-off. And um that's right, because I phoned Dave from the Redemption Show because Kathy, who was one of my fellow contestants, who was a really <laughs> cool chick, extremely funny and very much Dave's type, and I knew that, and so she really wanted to go out with the guy, and I said, you know, I think I have a guy for you, and then there all of a sudden we were phoning, phoning Dave, <laughs> and uh, then she had her own spinoff of her dating show, and that... And then, yeah, you guys went out a few times. It didn't work out, but you no. know, you gave it a go. <laughs> no, did Why not. didn't it work out? Uh, well. <laughs> Politely. Uh, it, it just, we weren't, there wasn't a click between us. We were not All a right. match. Fair I mean, enough. in many ways, I, I, I found her a little frantic. Um, and um, <laughs> yeah, well, let's, well, okay, first of all, I think I got the call when I was on tour out east, and uh, uh, I was on, it was, we were in St. John's. Ooh, this is good. This is Dave gossip now. Yeah. This is Dave gossip. Well, yeah. Well, and, and it's, <laughs> yeah, and I was on uh, uh, George Street, and uh, so, and I remember I got the call, and, you know, and Kathleen, you know what someone's condition is usually like on George Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, what? Yeah, of course I will. I'll date anyone. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you don't have to be drunk to be like, I'll date anyone. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah where actually, that came I, from. Should, I should narrow that down. Uh, yeah, no, we, we not, did not, but did you say that she had her own dating show? Yeah. Oh, I'd um, like to see that. I'd like to see her a I'd like to see other men suffer. <laughs> and it was, this, uh, yeah, it was a very similar thing where she could pick who she wanted to go out on a date with. Oh, okay. Dave, 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 you have a history of dating fast, reality chicks. Yeah. You have a history of dating reality chicks. Well, the other reality chicks. Remember of the Yucks agent? Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, well, her name. Well, okay. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm I would. I'm still terrified. If I ever saw her in the street, that she would do something crazy. Because she did not like me. Well, only because I think you knew the truth about her. 
<laughs> and I think a lot of those, a lot of the stories that she sort of gained sympathy for were not exactly. And true. We don't have to get into that, but I'm okay. just saying it was just funny that <laughs> right. she then became on a dating show and that you were, they called you. I just think that's funny. Well, what what was funny is that no, that she she was on that uh, Sarah was on a dating show before she yes was, uh, employed by Yucks, and I don't think anybody watched that show that she was on. Mm -hmm. Because if anyone watched that show, they would be like, oh, I don't know if we should hire this person. But yes, Kathy and I went on um, uh, one day. Uh, a, well, we, we went out a couple of times. But uh, it was a really organized day. Didn't you go to some retreat and wear robes? What? <laughs> there was some... Can we just be Martin Boggs episode? Because, Beth, you can talk. All... I want to hear all the hot guys about this. Is this Dave some kind of eyes wide? Shut is this eyes wide shut? There was some sort of uh, yeah, uh, eyes wide shut. Well, okay, <laughs> country house. <laughs> okay, two things, two things. Okay. Yeah, uh, I went over. Uh, I she mm -hmm. invited me over for dinner once. That was our first date, and I remember driving there, and I didn't know what she did for a living. And I drove up to this house, and I was like, "Oh my god, wow, she, this is place is huge." I don't know what. Yeah. And then I so saw, and she was thirty eight, I believe, or thirty nine. And uh, so I go in, and then it took me about two seconds to realize, oh, she lives at home, and this is her parents' house, and that's why I had to be out by a certain time because her <laughs> were coming home. And I was just like, where the fuck am I? What's going on here? What? I mean, am I? Am I? If she's already made. A Dave, Dave, did you have to leave through the balcony window like a <laughs> rom com? You know, like oh my god, the the car. Yeah, it was like that scene from private school for girls in the eighties. <laughs> Me and Bubba Beauregard trying to climb a fence, um, <laughs> and then the actual date that we went on to this, it was not a resort. Uh, there were no robes. Um, have you ever heard of um, Have you ever heard of ayahuasca? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. You did ayahuasca? Yeah, I did ayahuasca out what? in the woods with uh, a group of other people. And I thought it was going to be much more sort of like hippie-ish. And we'd be out in the woods listening to the Moody Blues or John Denver or something like that. <laughs> uh, but it was very, very churchy and very Jesus-y. And I was not ready for it. And I don't think she exactly knew what 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 she was showing up to either. So... And then they separated the men on one side and the women on the other side. <laughs> oh no! There was all this chant going on, and they passed around this stuff that we're all drank from. And then you puke. Well, yeah. Two of the side effects are is that uh, you either throw up or, or you shit, shit yourself. <laughs> and uh, that sounds like a perfect date. Well, <laughs> yeah. Let's like, date number two. This like, was what do you do for the two. third date? What's I don't know. Actually, I don't even know if there was a third date. Um, but uh, but yeah. Well, Dave, Dave, did I you think puke? she really liked you, Dave. I think you broke her heart somewhat. I do. I think she really liked you. Oh, well, I do. Did you puke really, or shit, Dave? Which one did you do? Her. Uh, well, I uh, not to disappoint. I did both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and apparently, and then Kathy didn't need to do either one of them. Kathy did not puke or shit. Oh, I puked and shit, which is what is supposed to happen. It is a you took it for her. You took it for the team. Yeah. that's a nice. You're a gentleman, Dave. You're a gentleman at the end. Um, I've never heard of anybody going on a date and doing ayahuasca. Like I don't know why I have not heard this story yet. But yeah, this me is either. amazing. We need well, Beth on to draw more of this stuff out. <laughs> well, the thing was, it's sort of like. I, I just, I wasn't on board with all the religious -y stuff. I mean, but, you know, you, you hallucinated. And if I was on more of a trip or something like that, sure. it might have been more fun. But it was all very chanting and Jesus-y and God and all this stuff. And I wasn't really a part of it. So I had to, I actually, I, I was, I came prepared with an extra pair of shorts. So <laughs> I had to get up and I left the group and I went <laughs> and I got a new pair of shorts. And Good. we were sort of camping grounds, not camping grounds, but we were at this guy's, uh the sort of the acreage that he had and so then i just ended up just sitting with the guy that owned the house and then i started having a, a like a, a just a drink with him and then one of the churchy guys came back down the road and then said you have to come up to the group 
everyone needs to be there. And I was just like, I, I, I can't do this anymore, more, man. I, I just can't. And he said, no, you have to go. And then I was just like, I've seen enough cult movies where I was just like, okay, you know what? I'll go and I'll sit and I just won't be a part of it. But I was ready to be like, you know, it's, we were so far that like nobody could hear you scream. It was like, this literally of- sounds like Midsommar, that movie yeah, we were talking does. about. Yeah, it was like, it's literally, and but- you should have a t shirt that says, I'm with Churchy Guy. Yeah, or I, su- I survived Midsommar and I didn't, and all I got was a <laughs> stupid t shirt. Uh, or this brand right here. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, yeah. You so could do any. Kathy oh, sorry, go ahead. And I, that's when I, I told her what had happened to me, and she got a good giggle out of that. And, uh, and that's when I wrote the joke, love comes in many forms. Sometimes you can, oh, some, oh, love can drive you crazy to the point where you want to push someone out of a moving car, but you want them still to be there when you get home. <laughs> Except I didn't want Kathy to be there when I got home. I was just, <laughs> oh, okay. I don't mean to be mean, but it was just like, I, I didn't think that we would be going to be having a relationship anyways. And we'd already booked this ayahuasca thing. And Dang. so I'm like, Dang. I'm on to go on this ayahuasca trip. So I'm just going to go and do it. And I didn't realize how much puking and shitting there would be. Dang. <laughs> Dang. Like, like the perfect date, but. Dave, no matter who you go, if date number two is that, it doesn't matter who you're going with. It ain't surviving. Yeah, I don't, well. So you don't have to tell me anything about her. Or she's a good or bad person. If that's date number two, it's going south for everyone. Or if you, no, or if you can make it through that date, then you should get married. No. Oh, yeah. No, because then you're fucking both crazy. Well, then, then you should be together forever. I don't <laughs> no. know. Then well, you'll have crazy babies, and they'll grow up and do crazy things. you got to stop the cycle, Dave. Well, Beth, <laughs> if you could do any other reality show, what reality show would you do? Beth, this is for you. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I, I, I really think everybody has one reality show in them. I really yes. do. Yeah, we've all got one reality show at least. I would like to go on a reality show where you get to go into a store and you're allowed to have as much stuff as you want, and everything like supermarket that you put on. <laughs> I don't know; it's not been invented yet, but I'm just okay. fantasizing about what my show would be, where <laughs> and you could grab as much as you could and walk out with it. That would be my reality show, and then that's amazing. Can we? Can we can that was my that's my fantasy but for existing shows, kind of like what's that what was that show what not to wear that one always looked fun because you had to throw out your old wardrobe but you mm-hmm. got five thousand dollars to buy a whole new wardrobe that's yeah a little bit like what I you would want to do with that show i hated the way that they dressed everybody because they all look yeah. kind of the same and they all look kind of yeah. corporate with you know the same jacket and the little kitten heels and <laughs> yeah. i really felt like they they took everybody's style and they threw it in the bin and then they said no you should be wearing this and i you should host a show about like keeping your your individuality but still yeah, looking good I, I hate any i hate um any kind of dress code and i hate any kind of fashion rule and when people say you should wear this at a certain age or you shouldn't wear that i say you should whatever you should wear what ever you want and don't listen to anybody tell you what you should wear if it makes you happy then you should wear it i don't i i can't handle dress codes of any sort when all of a sudden you know they tell you what that you they want to see you in i go a little crazy and i'm always you know well a lot of your posts you have a lot of posts that are fashion based and a lot of those fashions some people would probably consider to be old-fashioned or not cool now but it is it is cool when you post it because it's like yeah that was something back then and people yeah, forget. Culture. That's what yeah. I'm primarily interested in. And look yeah. what we wore. And yeah. I love that as far as you know pop culture and and looking back and fashion and trends and saying oh my god we all used to wear that I can't believe it. <laughs> now when when did we you start cool. getting into hypnotism because that's been a, a good part of your life in the last probably what ten years now. Oh no, 20. 20. I've been a hypnotist for about 20 years and I've been, I don't really do a lot of it anymore. I used to do a lot of hypnosis shows and we've traveled and done some 
big shows. We've played Vegas and we've done the National Guild of Hypnotists convention a couple of times in Boston. And I've even taught stage hypnosis to hypnotherapists, so to speak. But right. um, I've, you know, done it, you know, and then I thought, well, I just don't want to be a hack. And, you know, as you probably know from doing comedy and doing clubs that people love hacks. They love right. humor that is just very cheap. And um, they like to see their friends being embarrassed on stage or, you know, turning into chickens is, you know, the old hack thing for stage hypnotism. But I, my, it makes me cringe and I never wanted any part of it. And I realized but that's what people want. Yeah, I, I know. I wanted I it to be like a Fellini movie when everybody's being very clever and saying funny things and, and being interesting. But, you know, people want to see people dancing around and, you know, looking for their belly button and, and stuff. <laughs> but that's what people want. And so I I'm use like, hypnosis you know, to get to sleep. I, it, you, I'll put YouTube and there's like sleeping hypnosis and it works. Yeah. Like you'll just get it. If I'm having trouble falling asleep, uh, like instead of the meditation stuff or those story things, I find that those YouTube hypnosis things are amazing. Like I'll be out so fast. I and then I wake up thinking of a chicken. <laughs> I, I have do? one on my page on Mr. and Mrs. Hypnotist on my page. Okay, I'm going to look at anybody you can, anybody can get it. I have one called turn on your inner superstar. And it's just a very, um, general, uh, hypnotic track it's 15 minutes and it will make you feel great you just trance out listen to it and it's the suggestions are for everybody like all feel this is your youtube stuff. page it's my no it's on my facebook i have a facebook page um mr and mrs hypnotist okay cool and it's all there and i have a website too but i don't know and i'm sure it's still on that as well but anybody can hear it what i have a friend that used hypnosis to give birth and she's like I didn't feel anything <laughs> she's like she said it's, it was it's amazing. amazing it works yeah yeah it does it was amazing oh wow yeah wow that's you should like make no epidural nothing just hypnosis you should make one that constipated <laughs> that wouldn't be a terrible thing though I mean it, it could be quite useful we were well, I know that we all have to have <laughs> I know we all have to be useful for me anyways um I know that like, it is a struggle because everybody wants to have their own unique thing and, and not be a hack. And, 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 and there's so many things that get recycled these days for like TV shows and movies and stuff. And I'm just curious, have you seen, I don't even know if it's still on. I know it was on for a while, but did you ever see the relaunch of supermarket sweeps with Leslie Jones? I have not. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's on Crave. Oh, I was on that show. Yes, yes, I know that. Yeah, you were? Yes, yes, yes that, that so. how, how many appearances did you have on Supermarket Suites? I had one, and let's just say it was awful. Because <laughs> at the first round, we were winning. I had ESP. I knew exactly. And Timo Monte was the host. And in the lightning rounds where he asked the questions, I, I knew exactly the answers before like he'd say one word and I go lentil and I we were winning like crazy and then in the end I screwed up big time I will admit it was all my fault and I we ended up coming in last and you can see at the end when we're all like standing there waving goodbye I am so trying to smile and pretend it's okay right. and um, I was I've never been so mad at myself I remember and they were shooting in Hamilton I remember driving back from Hamilton Paul was driving and I remember I didn't believe that we came in last I wanted him to turn around so they could go and oh. and count our points in front of us <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to recap <laughs> I, if you tell me that you were on bumper stumpers now, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> no, on, no, my friend oh, Nancy was on bumper stumpers. <laughs> I love bumper stumpers. <laughs> now, now, weren't both you and what both weren't you and Paul Irving, your your uh, your very funny comedian and husband, uh, weren't both of you homemakers? When he asked you what you were, <laughs> oh, I'm still mad at him for that. I know. <laughs> so when Timo Monty says, "And what do you do, Beth?" 
And he made me say I'm a homemaker. I thought that was the worst answer because I had a full-time job at the time. And I did it because my husband asked me to, because, you know, he asked me to. So I said, I'm a homemaker, Timo. And um, then he said, and Paul, what do you do? And he said, I'm a homemaker too. And I was like, oh, very funny. Oh, they're both homemakers. I'm still mad at him for that. Thanks for mentioning it. That's funny though. That is funny. No, it's not really all that funny. <laughs> I can oh, like no, everybody thinks hilarious but me. <laughs> knowing Paul, knowing Paul, I could see why he thinks that's very funny. He thought it was hysterical. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. So I'm a homemaker and I'm a homemaker. Ha ha ha. We're all homemakers. <laughs> well now 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 there's an episode though, because there's a mutual friend of ours, Paul, uh well well, his name's Stark from Stark Naked in the Flesh Homes, the punk band from the eighties, uh out Stark of Stark and Tracy. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stark and Tracy are on an episode. And I think when they cut to the audience, I think you and Paul are in the audience as well. And so, oh. did, you, so did you have No, to... we weren't there that day. You must have. Oh, really? Been there. No. Oh, I swore that I but swore... you see, their episode is famous because that was on the best of game shows because somebody took a nosedive with their cart and went right into the camera or the or the cash register or something like it was like a fierce like and then everything went flying and grab a couple that's one way to be safe and now barbara she's trying to get her hands on some of that nabob bonus item as well hurry up paul hurry up we're running out of time shoppers the countdown's underway here comes Michelle! Watch out! Whoa! What a landing! Come on down, Shepard! As she no doubt only has. Special thanks to our announcer, Dave King. Our checkers are standing by, and in a few seconds we'll find out which team... <laughs> that, that's all right, Parker. Which team has scored the highest amount, and that team moves on to the bonus round with a chance to win up to $5,000. They catch your prize. You know, people love seeing that on TV, and it was it, it Stark's episode made it to best of um, reality television disasters. To me, the best <laughs> the best Canadian game show was will always be the Mad Dash. Mad I Dash. Love that one. I remember it. I remember. Yeah, that was. I, I don't remember what happened though. It was filmed. I believe it was filmed in Montreal, um, and the host of it was a well-known um, person from Montreal, also an actor. And uh, it was just. A, it was almost like a game board. They had to run. They had so much time, yeah. and they had to run around it. That's why it's called the Mad Dash. I mean, everyone loves definition in the song and all that. And mm -hmm. Of course, it's great, but I don't know why. I just saw this kooky little game show called the Mad Dash, and I'm like, this is weird. You were yeah. a young kid, sick, you know, home from school. Oh yeah, that's, that's what weird. I did. I I I pretended I was sick all the time so I could stay home and watch game shows. Yes. Did what? you ever see Kid Street? Like it was in the it was for kids in the eighties. Like, did you ever hear that one? I heard no. that. Yeah. It, it's it was basically like the honeymoon game, but for brothers and for siblings. Yeah. And you'd sit in this little race car and you'd answer questions about yourself. And then if you won in the end, you got to go into this room that was just filled with toys and pick out all the toys you wanted. <laughs> I wanted to be on well, that, that show sounds so like my bad. Time. That sounds like yeah. perfect where you can go. I remember when we lost supermarket sweeps and we were in the parking lot leaving and the couple that won, they you choose um, like a, a letter that from supermarket sweeps and they won um, his and her um, fancy watches. And um, I was so, I didn't even like the watches, but I was so jealous and I was so mad that they won them because I felt like they should be rightfully mine. And uh, we won pet food for a year and we didn't even have a pet. And, <laughs> and we won. Oh yeah. And so did Stark and Tracy, a water bottle, um, like a-, a, a Water cooler? Yeah, and but you had to give it back after a certain amount of time. So you <laughs> said, "No, no, we're fine." And then That's we so won a, a bucket with Lysol products, and oh, we won we won a, a suitcase. 
a small little trap or suitcase. <laughs> so you didn't go home empty handed. No. I didn't go home empty handed. Everybody gets parting gifts. The his and her watches were, you know, you could probably sell them and, you know, not collect them and make, you know, 400 bucks. But the his and her, the, no, the pet food from Purina and they gave you vouchers. They said, do you have a cat or a dog? And I said, both, just because I didn't know what to say. And so they give you vouchers that you go to the supermarket and you hand in the voucher and you can get your pet food. And I remember I had these vouchers and nobody wanted them because all of my friends, they have their high end pet food <laughs> that they buy the, you know, science diet and everything. They didn't want the Purina. So I remember they had a, a an expiry date and I had like a ton of them. And I, I went to um, Loblaws and I waited in the pet food section on the last day that these vouchers were going to expire. And I gave them to, uh, away to everybody that were Aww. buying pet food. Yeah. You're the pet food fairy. Because yeah. my friends were too snobby to take the free pet food. And, That's oh, no, they didn't want it. You know, oh, I'm really broke. What am I going to do? Well, do you want some pet food? I have some vouchers for Purina, and at least your cat won't starve. Oh, no, my cat doesn't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's awesome. That was a lot of that. Well, if you ha if you happen to do that now, you would be so you would people would probably get your photograph taken and be like, this, "Look at this act of kindness that this woman is giving away pet food vouchers and standing in the pet food aisle." <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, thank you so much, uh, Beth, for uh, for coming on. This was a lot of fun to uh, chat with you. Great and, to see you guys. Thank yeah, you it was so me. good to see you. Yeah, thanks, Beth. And then, and Beth, when uh, if when people want to like, because uh, you you always put out like a, an array of I don't know how many photos you put out a day. But, I put out a lot. I take down a lot and I put out a lot. Yeah. But I mean, it's uh, and I again, I don't know where you find them, but I mean, they're they're always, and uh, whether it's like architecture or even interior design, some of those. I wake up every morning and I look at art. That's yeah. what I do. Every morning I sit there and I look at paintings or architecture or houses and insides and photography is what I do. And I say what I like. Well, and, and every one of the day. things I like about seeing this, the stuff that you do post, um, there's never a chance that anyone ever is going to get a, like, uh, like mad or upset or offended yeah. by anything. It's always, wow, there's a very cool picture of Tina Turner or there's a cool uh, interior of a house from the 60s that has a sunken floor that- Love those sunken floors. You don't yeah. see those anymore. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right, well, Beth, where, where can people find you? you have, and you have a, uh, a perfume line as well for Knockout Colors. What? That, oh my God. Uh, I have a skincare You're company, the coolest Knockout ever. Colors. <laughs> Knockout Colors, I do, uh, yeah, I have a skincare line that I okay. make my own products well, well, yes. well we'll throw that information up uh right now and uh if people want to find you uh we'll put uh your instagram up there and your knockout colors and thank you very much for uh coming and hanging out with us i'm supposed Thanks, to be guys. in toronto in june probably so i want to see you then okay please be gorgeous we'll make it happen yes i miss you <laughs> i miss you too thanks bye. guys bye. bye bye thanks for bye. having me Thank Thanks you. for Bye coming. Guys. Bye. I'm going to press the ejector button now. Bye. <laughs> That'd be fun if people just shot out of this. Greetings from Tromoville. I'm Lloyd Kaufman, president of Troma Entertainment and creator of the Toxic Avenger. You know, folks, when we're not making those great movies like Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead, or Tromeo and Juliet, the Troma team and I kick back and listen to Anything Goes because it's with Darren Frost and it's on XM Laugh Attack. Ha, 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 I'm laughing. Ha, ha, I'm having a heart attack. Oh, oh, no. Anything Goes. Anything Goes with Darren Frost. Ah, it's Lloyd Kaufman. I'm dying. Ah. <laughs> I uh, I wonder when she was talking about um, uh, sort of gossip and TMZ stuff. I um, I almost kind of wanted to jump in and just say like, I don't think it's it's always comedians too. I've 
I've heard so many conversations. Once I started becoming a comic, I've heard so many conversations to start off with, okay, don't tell anybody this, right? And it's like, right. one thing, I don't mind, I don't mind the personal, I don't mind the industry gossip when people are sort of like, oh, did you hear who's writing on what show? Did you hear who got this festival? Right. Did you hear right. who that is? But even some of the, but it's the personal stuff. I think maybe 10 years ago, I might've sort of got a kick out of it. But now it's almost, you hear so much personal shit on Facebook and people yes. share too much already on Facebook that now it's like when it gets personal, I'm just sort of like, listen, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to, there's only so much you want to know when you meet a run into someone you haven't seen in a while. And if you've heard some crazy shit about them, it's like, <laughs> like, like, if, like they shit and puke. Themselves. yeah like they should yeah. on a second day yeah. Yeah. Even, before, <laughs> even before social media my attitude was always like someone would tell me oh this person's talking shit about you and i'd be like okay let me ask you where was it a bunch of comics in a car driving somewhere and then after that person made that comment they all kind of laughed it was that kind of shit talking were they you know saying i'm just an angry hack or whatever fine or did they say you know I do actual personal bad things. Like I fuck around on my wife on the road or I do this or I do that. Cause that's the shit that would be like, okay, I'd call someone on. If they call me yeah. a hack, a cunt, an asshole, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Cause a lot of times comics like to talk shit about other comics to make other comics laugh. And I get that. And I can appreciate that. And, and I've, even some of my good friends don't realize some of the shit they said got back to me, but I'm like, people were laughing. I get it. We're comics. But when I agree with you, when it gets to personal stuff, like who fucks who and all that shit, I don't care. I, I never it. have. Yeah. It's like when it's like when comic couples break up. I've never taken a side. Or when a comic breaks up with a civilian, I still make sure I try to talk to that civilian every once in a while. Because it's not, I don't know what happens behind closed doors. It's not my yeah. business. But it, yeah, social media has made it a lot of people's business. Right. Yeah. It's just a... Uh... I know I've, I've been in a couple green rooms and I've heard a couple of people start talking and then you're like, like, you're like, Whoa, I, I wish it, it's, it's almost to the point where sometimes you wish you did not know what you just heard. Right. You know, right. it's sort of like, like when someone says, Hey, do you want to see something really fucked up? And you're like, you know what? I wish I never actually saw that. Cause your yeah. first instinct is like, yeah. Like two girls, one. one cup, like two girls, one cup. Right. I yeah. still have never seen that. I never Good will. You. you don't do. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to. It's trust me. And it's, you can, I, I think someone described that video to me first, and I was just like, I already had. I gotta see this. <laughs> image of it in my head, and then I actually saw it, and it was like one of the few times that what was in my head, uh, or what what the actual thing was, was much much worse than what was in my head. And when I actually saw it, I was. There just, is there is simply a pre two girls one cup world and a post <laughs> two girls one cup world. Yeah, well, you know. I have pre-9-11 and post-9-11 world. Yeah. Aaron has 